Good evening. Welcome to our Growth Group Bible Study at Surigao Community Bible Church every Friday at 7 p.m. In our series, we are talking about the names and the title of Christ. There are different names and there are different titles of Christ. Last Friday, we talked about the Christ. That means that Jesus is the Anointed One, anointed for a specific purpose, a redemptive purpose to save His people. Tonight, we'll talk about another title of Christ, which is the Word, or in Greek term, Logos. Open your Bible on the book of John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 2. Let me read to you the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Let us pray first. Our loving, gracious Lord, worthy are you of all praises and honor. Indeed, you are the Word, the Logos, the One, the Uncreated One, that is God. Lord, help us understand your Word. Help us understand another title of you. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that is our greatest teacher. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our title is, another title of Christ is The Word, or in Greek term, Logos. Why did John use the term uh, Logos? Basically because this is common to his audience. Uh, for the Greek philosopher, uh, they believe that the Logos is the reason of existence of everything because they do not believe specifically on a one true God. They have identified an abstract and impersonal thing called Logos for the reasons of these existence. Amoy rason nga na no exist ang mga butang. And for the uh, Jewish people, this is a very theme in the Word of God in the Old Testament. We understand that through the Word of God that is, uh, and heavens are made. Just a word from His mouth, everything has come into existence. Or in John 1, 3, all things came into being through Him, and apart from Him, nothing came into being that has come into being. This happened through the word from His mouth. So, it's it's a common thing. It's common for them to understand of the term word. Even uh, Dr. Michael Brown, a Jewish Messianic Jewish scholar, says, Since God was often perceived as somehow untouchable, it was necessary to provide some kind of link between the Lord and His creation. One of the important links was the word called Memra in Aramaic. From the Hebrew and Aramaic root to say, the root used throughout the creation account in Genesis 1 when God said and the material world came into existence. We find this Memra concept hundreds of times in the Aramaic Targums. So, uh, because for others, the makita ang ginoo, untouchable ang ginoo, there must be a link between people or the creation and God, and their link is the Word. So this is a common uh, word for both the Greek and the Jewish people. But what does it mean when Jesus has the title, the Word. I have three things here. Number one, it means that Jesus is God. Second, that Jesus is an incarnate God. Third, that Jesus is 
a personal God. First, Jesus is God. When we say He is the Word, we mean that He is God. It's clear in verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You know, it's the clearest four words. The Word was God. That's the clearest explanation of the deity of God. That Jesus is not a mere man, not a mere prophet, or not even an angel, not even a mini-God. He is God. A capital letter G. And others, sadly, other denomination and religion consider him as a mere prophet, a mere angel, a mere mini-God, and a mere. Look at the third in verse 1. It says, the word was God. God there is Theos, but because they say, na ang God walay definite article, that means the word was God, wala may kung definite article na the before God, therefore this letter, this God is translated by other versions, sadly. Other versions of the Bible and other denomination, they translate it as the word, the word, small letter W, was God, small letter G. So for them, when the Bible declares the word was God, they are saying that Jesus was just a mere God, a little God. That means a created being or other translation they would say and the word was divine it's not God simply he is divine that means he has a supernatural power because he is created but this is a wrong interpretation if you study the Greek uh, grammar there is no indefinite article, A and an. So that means when uh, the word God usually, uh, in the Greek language, only has a definite article, the, since there is no indefinite article, an or a. So this is not a little g God, this is not divine this is god as in capital letter g so the word was god it means jesus is god here are three reasons number one theus appears without the definite article for other times in the immediate context if ang god na pasabot diri is gamay supposedly Dapat sa verse 6, there was a man sent from God. Dapat tag letter G na gamay po doon. Okay, it's the same context. Or in verse 12, But to all who receive him, he gave to write the children to become the children of God. It's still capital letter G. In verse 18, no one has ever seen God. That's a capital letter G. So it is inconsistent if um first verse na God is a small letter G because the whole context has the capital letter G. So that's the first reason na dili gamay na ginuginuo kung dili ang tinuod na ginu. Number two, this is a capital G because and not the term divine. Kay kung divine pa daon, si John, ito yung na tagbutang diretsyo na divine. Why will they complicate the Greek terms? You can use divine. Uh, Peter used the term divine in 2 Peter 1.4. 
So kasabot si Diyah sa Greek term na divine, that is Theos, the uh, small letter T-H-E-I-O-S. So kung divine daong, di ritual ng tana, ka divine ni John the Beloved. But he does not. And the third reason that na dili ini small letter G, kay kung small letter G dyan, gidiritsyor kang tana ni John pag small letter G. In the various pages in the scripture, there is small letter G which indicates a little uh, uh, the God of man's making. Why will John complicate it as divine or small letter G God? The very reason is that he is sure that Jesus is God. And here are reasons in the same verse. Number one, because of Christ pre-existent. In the beginning was the Word. That means in the beginning there was Jesus. When was the beginning? Before the creation of the world. There was He. If Jesus is not a God, how can He live before the foundation of the world? Before everything came into existence, there is He. Jesus was already there. There was never a time that he is not present. There was never a time that Jesus is not present. If God exists eternally, therefore he is God. If Jesus existed before the foundation of the world, therefore he is God. Who can do that? That's why he declares in the scripture, he says, I am. He does not say, I was, or I will be. He says, I am. That means he is existing. He is always existing. There was no point in his life that it never exists. He is eternally existence. existing, I mean. So Jesus was in the beginning. And second reason, he is not just pre-existence, he coexists with God the Father. It says here, and the Word was with God. The Word here is Jesus. God here would mean God the Father. So he existed before with God. John 1.18 No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father. He was there. He has a fellowship with God the Father. It's in the literal sense, he is saying he has, he is, he has faced, he is face to face with the Father. John 17, 5. Now, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. You see, he has a fellowship with the Father, and he is glorified together with the Father. If Jesus was not, is not a God, is not the God, he would have not existed and glorified together with the Father. So Jesus is God because He pre-exists. Second, because He coexists with the Father. And thirdly, because He was self-existent. And the turn there, and the Word was God. The Word or Jesus was not Created. He is the uncreated one. Is there a beginning of God? If Jesus not, he existed. He is self-existent. Nobody made him. It says here, G, the word was God. The word did not became a God. 
or the word did not be uh, cease to be God, it says the word was God. Was here is not in the past tense. In the Greek term, it is in, in the tense, it is in imperfect tense. When we say imperfect tense, naga exist yapo. It's in a continuous form. Almost the same with perfect tense. But in the perfect tense, um, effect ni ang mulahutay, but in here, he is still existing. So the word was God. He is an uncreated one. No one created him. That is Jesus. That is the word. The word pre-exists. The word coexists with the Father and the word self-exists. If God, if Jesus is not God, he cannot do that. I will give you a lot of reasons. I can give you every page of the scripture to tell you and to prove to you that Jesus is God. But we'll not put that into detail. But just look at his worship. Kung di si Jack ginoo, nga nung accept siya ng worship. The angel did not accept worship when John bowed down to him. Look at his work. Who can do that? Who can raise the dead? Who can calm the storm? None can do that. And he, he is called God by uh, his disciples and many other people. And he even declared that he is God and he is co-equal with the Father. I and the Father are one. You see, Jesus is God, and I do not understand why they and other religions can't see that. That's clear in the Bible. If you want to know more, you can search the internet. You can search a lot of pages in the scripture to tell you that Jesus is God. Do not be deceived by those people who tell you that Jesus is just a man. He is not. He is a fully God and a fully man. He is self-existent. In Revelation 4, 8, it says, He is, He was, He is, and who is to come. Who was, and who is, and who is to come. That means He is the I Am. He is continually existing. John MacArthur called the word is a person. It's not an attribute or emanation from him. And he is of the same essence as the Father. You see? Jesus is God. So when we say that Jesus is the word, number one, it means Jesus is God. Second, it means Jesus is an incarnate God. It's not a created God. Incarnate God means he, he clothed himself with a human form. It does not become. He just came. Uh, uh, just a, a clear look on that phrase. It's in 1st John, or 2nd, 1st uh, John 4, look at this, by this, verse 2, 1st John 4, 2, by this you know that the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, that means he came. It's not he becomes, he is not created. It means he came from, meaning he is from uh, his home, heaven. But he is not a created one. So Jesus is an incarnate God. He is a full God before the foundation of the world, but he humbled himself to 
for a specific purpose, that is, he is anointed for a specific purpose, the Christ, to die for his people. He humbled himself and take up the bodily servant, obeyed the law, and put in the cross, crucified in the cross, to save humanity. I mean, to save his people. To save those who will believe on him. That is the Word. He is an incarnate God. That's why in John 1, 14, it says here, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. He became flesh. Who became flesh? Who is a God who became a man? There is none but Jesus. We, we always sing this, Amazing love, how can it be that you, my God, would die for me? He became a man to die. For his people. Isn't that a good thing? That when we remember that Jesus is the Word, we analyze that He is God. And even though He was God, He humbled Himself to die for the worst sinner like us, who is undeserving of any favor from Him. Yet He chose to die, not because we are good, but because He is a loving God and a covenant-keeping God. And thirdly, Jesus is not just a God. He is not just an incarnate God. Jesus is a personal God. Isaiah 43, verse 3 to 4, For I am the Lord your God. The possessive pronoun your there indicates that he is personal. The Holy One of Israel, your Savior, I have given Egypt as your ransom. Verse 4, since you are precious in my sight, since you are honored and I love you, I will give other men in your place and other peoples in exchange for your life. He is a personal God. The Greek philosopher sees the Logos as an impersonal thing. Other religions see the Logos as an impersonal God. But Jesus is a personal God. He is our Lord whom we can rely on. The Lord whom we can communicate. The Lord whom we can rely. The Lord who is our comfort and every need we can ask of Him because He is personal. It's a wonderful thing. And if you do not believe that Jesus is God, how can you be saved? If Jesus was just a mere man and he died on the cross, he cannot save you and I. He cannot be resurrected in the third day if He is not a God. He is not the God. But because He is God, He was able to defeat death and sin. Other religions do not consider Him as an incarnate God. Do not believe that he has come into the flesh. If you do not believe in the incarnation of Christ, you do not believe that he is God. 
so when we say that Jesus is the word or the logos we mean that Jesus is God that Jesus is an incarnate God and Jesus is a personal God let me conclude by stating to you the doubt of Thomas in John 20 26 29 after eight days his disciples were again inside and Thomas with them Jesus came the doors having been shut and the stood in their midst and said peace be with you and he said Thomas reach here with your finger and see my hands and reach here your hand and put it into my side and do not be unbelieving but believing Thomas answered and said to him my Lord and my God Jesus said because you've seen me you have you believed blessed are they do not see me and yet believe Iban may lao may nakuratan ko si Thomas my Lord and my God no it's not that is the declaration of Thomas when he realized the deity of God. Jesus is God. And I challenge, and I, those who claim that Jesus is just a man, please study the word. And open be open to arguments that is playing in the scripture and if it is clear in the scripture believe it Jesus is God and for those who believe that Jesus is God in their lives may it be true that we will be ruled by God in our thoughts, action, and words. Jesus is God, and this is our hope that He has saved us and He can save us till eternity. Let us pray. Our loving, gracious Lord, thank you for reminding us again that you are the Word the Logos, who is not just a mere man, who is not a mere man, but God, who can save us and who can help us. We magnify your name for you, Holy Lord. Christ, we pray. Amen.